leaders, all the leaders, greetings. I want to do this quickly, so I ask you to respond to me quick. Of course, good morning to the studio. All right, the fortress, house of exchange, house of souls, greetings to you all. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I just want us to prepare with the word for this new week. And not only for this new week, I think every word is to kind of give us a new setting, um, especially the setting of focus. Um, you know, I was speaking to one of your sisters yesterday. She was giving me her regular weekly update. Um, and her updates around work, it's not, when I say work, because if not, people would then think, oh, it means just keep talking to me. No, we don't have the time to keep talking. If I'm to be honest with you, um, we talk on a basis of work. Do you understand that? So she was giving me her weekly update, and I was saying that she was telling me the profit she's made and all of these things, and I was thinking, okay, well done. But it's important that you know your strategy well what you're doing you have your strategy you know your strategy with that strategy you would have you have had had to um, understand the kind of discipline you would need to be able to keep that strategy going and I made a comment that usually what causes people to then um, in the line of how would I say this in the line of gaining in the line of profit, what will make someone start to lose, in the line of being constantly spoken of, let me use that as another example, if you're constantly spoken of, um, you're seemingly esteemed, either by myself or any other person, um, what usually makes that person start to fall, or get someone into a bad position, is usually, let me just be honest with you, not because the person's bad, I want to open this and that will be my only address. It's not because the person's bad, but what we'll start to see someone start to go down is complacency. They start to get complacent. And there are many factors that create complacency. One, it can be familiarity. You know, I'm just, I want to make it clear. You've never heard me roll into service late. Never heard me do that. Never. So I already don't expect the same flow of blessing, whatever it is, unless you want your life to be based on excuses. And we can all have excuses, but I can blatantly say that we haven't rolled into service late. Usually what causes that is complacency. If you search deeply into your spirit, into your being, why you do what you do, it's complacency. But I'll just leave that. That's all I wanted to say on that topic. Um, I, you can come in, Dora. Um, I've just made up my mind also that, and I think I've said this, I think I've mentioned this to the house, not to the house, sorry, to the situation room. Um, and I've mentioned this to a few people. The heartache of a leader, now this is separate to what I was just addressing, but I want to say this to the whole family. The heartache of a leader is that you want everyone to prosper. That's the heartache. I think it was Josh I was in a conversation with and he um, rightly notified that if you want to know where Pastor Obi's heart is right now, it's ensuring that everyone has. That was a good observation because that's where I am. I don't care about one person having, it doesn't mean anything. But for us to create a community, to create a viable economy, so there are some people I look at to making sure that they understand what we're trying to do collectively. They understand that. But moving on from that, so, you know, I think that where we are, or I'm just thinking if I want to move on from this. Okay, let me move on from that. So where we are in what we're doing right now is there's a focus i believe that we need to have a certain level of focus if we leave life to just chance there will always be an excuse for something 
excuse for why we can't do word at this time, excuse for why we can't go and do this, we can't raise this finances, excuse for why we can't go and carry out this agenda. There will always be excuses in life. Excuses, like I've said to you, um, or let me just say in the other way, I would like to say it maybe will be clearer this way. Focus and the issues that come with the decision to f be focused, yeah, the issues that come, comes to only filter out the great. It comes to filter out the, the great. And the reason why I'm saying that to you is because I've actually realized, I think one of my personal prayers, listening to all the words that Pastor Toby was taking us through last week in our reform and strategy week. And then, of course, when he started to emphasize on vision. Do you know why I asked God for? I asked God and it was quite interesting that PT was talking about clarity of vision. I ask God to make my mind simple. I think there's too many people thinking of, I think there's people that think of too many things. So it's very hard for you to focus your mind. And you know, I've decided to make myself so simple that all I see is leadership, which is word, and then my response to leadership, which is seed and souls. As in, I'm actually training myself, and this will kind of finish off the statement I started. I'm actually trying to see myself not looking too much into people anymore. This is Monday morning, so I start off with just having a conversation, a gist with you. Um, I'm trying not to look at people too much. Like Pastor Toby said the other day, that, and I know he was referring it more so from outside in, um, but we did not pay attention to our growth. It's not like our, we were caught up in um, how someone's growing. We were just lost in what we were doing. That's the comment PT was making. We were just lost in what we were doing and then things happened, almost happened. So what I'm trying to say with this is that or going off the comment that I was making at first and I'll just go back to my trail of, um, train of thought. I've said that, and I think, I, yeah, I was saying that I said this to the Situation Room team, and I've said this to a few people, that prosperity, in as much as a, as a leader would want to see everyone prosper, um, Solomon complained about something, and I won't go into the scriptures, but into that scripture, Ecclesiastes, but he constantly complained about the vanity of life, and he actually used to say that, the more knowledge you know, the more pain it brings. That's paraphrasing. And I look at some people and I'm honestly saying to myself, if I look too much into people, of course as a leader there's a way you look into people, but if you look too much into people, you're going to hurt yourself. I was not called to look at people, I was to look into the word. And why I want to open up with that comment is because I want to say to you here, especially that everyone listening to me, has the potential and the lots given to them, fallen before them to become a leader of some sort. You have to be someone whose eyes are set on the word. When I talk about the word, it's not again, and I boldly, like I made a comment last time, I'm not referring you first to the Bible. I don't think people can understand this on their own accord. I'm talking about the embodiment of the word for the word became flesh. God knew that if people are going to become, uh, are going to transition from being the normal human race into a God race, they must have the word with them. So to make it easier for them to have relation with the word, God moved the word from being a spiritual entity and he gave it flesh, meaning that you can find the word and the totality of the word in a person. Are you with me? The moment I found a pastor Toby, the word became real to me. And that's a comment I want to make, actually wanted to make a bit later. The moment I found a pastor Toby, the moment I had a leader, the word became real. I'm regulated by his thoughts. No, I'm, uh, when we get into leadership talks, you will understand what it takes to become a, pros um, a prospering nation. You're going to have certain extreme thoughts or beliefs. I'm regulated not just by 
um, um, what everyone else is regulated. I'm regulated by the thoughts of a Pastor Toby, knowing that I have long discerned that he is word in this generation. And if you think that's just Pastor Obi speaking, PT is not here listening to me now. So this is not me trying to say something to him. Do you understand? Two, forget what I'm saying. Look at the results. But what I'm trying to also say is, by the time we made the decision to join the nation, we didn't see these results. So purely and truly, it was the discernment of word that attracted us. We didn't see the Rolls Royces or, uh, or the houses. It was just a man passionately involved in what God was trying to do here on earth. So the pain of a leader, and you have to understand, it, understand me that there are things that sometimes I can't really say outside of here. I'll be honest with you. Because people want to understand without the process of understanding. What, what I mean by that is people can feel weighed down by certain truths. But now if they approach you to hear the truth, you realize they don't want to hear the truth. I'll give an example. A young rich ruler came to Jesus, came to Christ, the rabbi, knowing that he knew the way to eternal life. Remember what I said to you the other day about eternal life? Do you remember? It's life beyond what you can currently see. And he knew that even though he is known as a rich man, even though he had become even a ruler, he knew that there was more to life. And he knew that the only way he can access that is if he met with Christ. It, only Christ had the keys to giving life and life more abundantly to anybody. It's the word. Only the word gives that key. It's not going to be how smart you are. It's not going to be the kind of family you have come out from. It's not going to be how hard you work or if you found the right business. It's the word that can only the word that can give you the key to a life that surpasses what you see currently and this young rich ruler came to Christ saying what must I do to inherit life Christ responded with what I think was a political answer he says you know what is written in the law to which the young man responded that I have been following these since I was um, since I was young then he asked him you know everything you have go and sell it the truth as to why he had not yet had eternal life listen to this now the truth as to why he didn't have um, eternal life to which he was looking for so earnestly was because he was not willing to accept leadership you know i know that you will probably think i was going to say because he was not willing to sell he was not willing to give all he had to the poor. But that's not true. That was a situation spoken to him. Christ knew what was holding him back. Just as leadership can look into an individual and what could be holding a person back may not necessarily be what is holding the next person back. But he looked at him and he said, okay, what you're missing it's not that you don't have the law. You don't have leadership. You had access to the Torah, but you're a ruler, so you cannot be ruled. You're God in your own space, so you don't have leadership. So when leadership, when I as a master, in quote Christ, when he came to say to him, okay, if you're willing to have eternal life, it's going to be by your obedience to me. He was not willing to, willing to do so. Because you see that finances, it showed that he was all about him. Are you listening to me? It showed that he was all about him. So again, the pain of a leader is that, and that, that goes from top to bottom. Don't think I'm speaking to one or two individuals, to everybody. I have, I've said it before, every time I hear Pastor Toby speak, yeah, I make notes. I consider his words. And the pain of, of a leader is you want everyone to prosper. But I think I was saying this and I kept quoting Pastor Enrique, meaning that I had this conversation with Pastor Enrique. However, at the point of growth as a leader, you realize 
that the levels of people will change, will differ. Um, that's why God is concerned not on the individual, but on the people. I want you to look and know, maybe I, I wasn't going to go into this. I haven't given you the scripture for it. Um, but it was part of my meditation off the back of what P.T. had been speaking on. Um, one thing that he's been saying to us, and I feel like because this is scripture, it's important that I share it with you. It's important that I share it with you, even though I'm not sure if it was um, exclusively mentioned in the word. But you see, in this house, and when I talk about the house, I talk about the family, the whole family. What is highly esteemed in this family, yeah, is as the name says it, family. Unity. The unity of the brothers is highly esteemed. I think I was speaking to the house of consultants the other day. And I said to them, I made mention to them that scripture actually said how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in harmony. I think I said that to House of Consultants. Then scripture dramatically compares it to something. He it says it's like oil that flows off the beard of Aaron down his garment. The flow of prosperity, the flow of of wisdom the flow of word is according to the level of unity are you listening to me in fact if we pay attention don't worry i'm quoting scriptures i'm trying to avoid getting into another side of a conversation i want to kind of keep this um focused on two points really <clears throat> but so i had to when pt was saying all of these things i had to look back at genesis actually you know, constantly he always says to us, if you can understand Genesis 1, 2, and 3, you understand the word. You will understand the rest of the scriptures. And I found, what I found interesting was what he said in Genesis 1. Actually, go to Genesis 1, verse 26, actually. This is not where I wanted to go, but I'll just start here before I go into my main scriptures. Go on. Then God said... Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. Yeah. In the image of God, he created them. That was the statement that stood out to me. In the image of God, he created them. You know, as P.T. was speaking, I had to realize that before God, Pastor Obi by himself does not matter. When God decided to create the human race, which was really his God race, it was a God lineage. He created them. The word came to create, in quote, sorry if this doesn't sound properly, but I want you to hear what I'm saying. The word came to create a them a people it was going to be as they unify themselves as they are considered one people that God can prosper them the strategy to take the world was in the coming together of a people are you listening to what I'm saying to you the word of God what he does first is create a people and this is why I realized that not because individuals are bad it's not but i realize when my spirit gets irritated with individuals it's nothing to do with them but it's actually the witness of my spirit saying it is not good for man to be by himself it's not good it's not fitting for takeover it's not fitting for what God intends to do when people are individuals. You know, sometimes you put people even into a team, yet they are individuals. God was almost not concerned with the life of Jacob until Jacob became Israel. Until Jacob had been put into Egypt and years had gone by, 430 as scripture says, before they became a people that are referred to as one man. 
It was only then that God can start to create nation. It was nations, a nation, sorry. It was only then that God can have a tool to take nations when they eventually grew and multiplied into becoming a people. That's what the word does. The word's intentions to make us a people. But I really want to stay away from this. So let's move on from here. So for me, uh, for me, what's important is what the word is saying. For me, what's important is that the word is always before us as a family because God will prosper us according to the word. The only thing he's concerned about prospering is the word. I've taught you this before. So I want the family to make sure that it's the words that we rely on. And why I must repeat this is because we can become almost familiar with finances. I'll make that comment later. We can become, I mean, in that I'll explain or give an example a bit later. We, bec- we can become so familiar with certain things that we lose the focus of the word. But I'll explain that. Mark chapter 3 is where I want to start. Mark chapter 3. What verse did I tell you to start with? 13. So before we go here, I want you to hear me. So last week was our reform and strategy week. Vision. And there's a lot that PT has gone to speak to us about. I've gone back and listened to the words. And, you know, what you're meant to do is you stay on a word until you receive that which is simple to you. Yeah. The word can sound so deep, but you stay there until you hear the simple instruction because it's what God has given you, sizable to you, for you to respond. I can't neglect thoughts like we're not doing away with the foundation, but what we're doing is refurbishing, renovating the structure. So that it can be attractive to our generation. And if there's ever a fight, if Apostle Toby comes and speaks in a manner, if Apostle Toby comes and speaks in a manner, it's not because there's an argument or anger towards an individual. It's just that there are certain setups that lives almost like ancient buildings within people that you have to have war with. You have to declare, break this down so we can build something new. So I want you to look at this because there's something interesting. And I don't know, um, so I'm not going to um, blatantly start this topic. But off the back of everything that Pastor Toby was saying, my heart has been leaning towards core again. The word core. At 17, I was cored. Or from my mother's womb, I was called whenever the time was. But the reason why we are here is because of a core. That core is to bring our attention to what God is doing. Or what God intends to do. When you are called, like Pastor Nikki was sharing with us powerfully yesterday. When the word comes, when we are called, we're let in on what it is God is trying to do. So look at this scripture, because I too am still listening, I won't go into this blatantly, so I'll touch on this just a bit, just for it to be a conversation in our hearts. But look at what happened. Mark chapter 3 from verse 13. Go on. Jesus went up on a mountainside. A demand, remember we've treated this before. All of a sudden, the price has gone up. Christ was just before this moment accessible to all. But once he started to see the crowd gathering to him, the Bible says in the Matthew account, I believe, but we're reading the Mark account, that he went up the mountainside and he called those he wanted. He was particular on the people he chose. And listen, Don't ever think that Christ was somebody that did things without without applying his mind to his decisions. For him to have called, as we'll later listed, but we may not even go all the way there. 
for him to call a Simon, that's Peter, a James and John and all of these people, it was because he had watched them for a while. He had gauged their response level. In the midst of the crowd, these were the people that were pushing to be closer. When there was a level playing field, these were the people. You know, people get offended sometimes when you start to pick people around you. Christ does not pick perfect people. He picks people who are willing to hear him. So there are many people, but Christ begins to pick people. And I'm saying to you here that Christ did not randomly out of the crowd. It would have been so difficult to do so. No, are you listening to me? It would have been so difficult to just look at a crowd and start picking people. No, it was according to the way they responded to him. When he used to speak the word, there was a manner in which Peter will respond. Peter was not perfect, but he will not seize, he will not struggle, he will not fret to respond. He was going to be someone that will consider what he was saying. You know, at a time, Christ spoke the word and needed a boat. And Peter was willing. There were many boats on that shore. But he was able to respond a bit more than the others listening. So Christ can use his boat as a podium or as a stage, as a platform to preach. You know, what Peter would not have known at that time was that that response level, that eagerness was setting him up to be appointed. You know, there's something about call that we say that it's nothing that they have done before and all of these things. Yet, when you look at scriptures, you see, you see, if we wanted to go to Romans 9, when I spoke to you about the seat of mercy, and he says that so that the purpose of his um, um, calling or however he said may be known where it says that it's not by works but by him who calls right yet in scripture if you look at examples like um, like um, Esau and Jacob there were certain things that they did or did not do that made someone chosen over the other you see these scriptures will not be fully understood if you don't accept that God is beyond time. Meaning he's not waiting for you to do something. But because he himself regulates time rather than, rather than being regulated by time. He knows the choice a person will make. He's the God as we say and I don't want to sound too spiritual this morning. But he's the God who knows the end from the beginning. So really if you make it or not. We used to think, oh, is it that oh, God is, there's certain things we cannot control? No, that's not true. It's in the power of men to be or not to be. You don't understand the way I've heard PT this weekend. It's in the power, it's in your power if you become or if you will not become. It's in your power, it's in our power. Now, back to what I was saying. So, Peter and Cole were people who Christ could see. The level of response was different. Do you remember the tax collector? Did you see when Christ called him? Did you see how he can create a banquet for Christ to be able to reach a people that will not go to things like the synagogues? Their response level was different eventually you heard and you would see later in case you think that's just this is just my imagination scripture later said that he posed the cost of discipleship to everybody and few chose it peter and cole can say but we have left everything their response was different so look at what he says jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him yeah those he wanted yeah and they came to him he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. He appointed 12. I want you to know that in the world, it would have also been, guess what I'm about to say to you? It also would have been difficult for God to randomly pick people out of the, n the number of people that exist in the world. 
How old are you now, sir? Do you know how many 23-year-olds there are in London City alone? Why would God pick an Afalabi? His response is different. He appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and that he may send them out to preach was a work of function that at that moment only Christ was doing. So in other words, he appointed 12 that they might, that they might be as he is. That they may be like him. When a PT picks a pastor Obi or a pastor Indidi or a pastor, I don't know why we hide your name, a pastor Sicily. Yeah, for goodness sake, I don't understand. Like, we don't even know who's looking. Or who's looking. Do you know how many Sicilies there are in this world? Why would God pick one? If God is going to pick us, or if PT, because you remember I was emphasizing that I'm regulated by the thoughts of PT. Yeah? The word became flesh. I think the people that just don't know how to follow the word are people who did not discern where the word became flesh. They didn't know that the word is not actually the book. That's why people do wrong with the book. The word, a man embodies the word. Or the word embodies a man. So he appointed 12. So why would God pick us when he picked us? Meaning the PT, when PT picked us, when God inspired PT to pick us, it was so that we can be like who PT is. He appointed 12 that they might be with him. And that he might send them out to preach. Go on. And to have authority to drive out demons. These were people without authority. But I bought them. I appointed them. I called them so that they may have authority. Demons feast on people. But if you are found called to leadership. What will happen is that you will have authority over these demons. You know there are. You know. Let me explain this so that you understand this. Depression is a demon. But you see, people who are not with leadership, yeah, do not have the authority to stop that depression feasting on them. With us, am I saying that people won't experience that? You may have. But you see, when you came to leadership, you were given authority over it. So it couldn't feast on you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So that these things don't sound too spiritual. Go on, read verse 16. These are the 12 he appointed. And then he names them. So what am I trying to say to you? There's an appointment. God called them to himself so that they may be with him. So they may be as he is. That's the first point I realized this week. That there were many people to be picked. Many people to be picked from. And I want you to hear this and I want you to boldly say this to yourself. I don't care if you're the newest member of a house or you've been here from the get-go. You were picked to be as the man you see in front of you. When you look at a pastor Toby, everything he is, that's your destiny. And it will take the form and the shape of the, of the world you are called into. The same glory the same shock that he brought to the world, the same consistency, the same boldness, the same prosperity, if not more, because God will multiply it, is what you are called into. That's the whole purpose of you being called and appointed to him. Now let's look at, that was Christ's mind behind his appointment. Let's look at the disciples' mind behind that appointment Hebrews chapter 11 read from verse 6 and without faith it is impossible to believe and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists 
and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Think about this scripture. It took faith, yeah, to look at Pastor Toby in the words he was speaking back in Lancaster House. I always, I'm so amazed with how real the spirit is because you know sometimes, yeah, life is so physical that sometimes, have you ever thought, is this spiritual thing real or is it just my mind playing me? But I know many of you think like that, don't worry. I, I say real things to God. I say real things. If he's going to crash me for it, then like PT said, I stand on his protocol and what he says, then God has an issue with a tantrum. He's, he, he likes, no, let me not say too much. <laughs> There's still religion that battles all of us. But in Lancaster House, 2015 or early 2016, before I've joined the family, I'm hearing Pastor Toby speak. I don't know one thing about the structure. <clears throat> I didn't know who a Pastor Sam was. I didn't know who a Pastor Oni was. Didn't know anything. At that moment, all I knew was youth revival. All I knew was that I was a radical soldier. And at that time or that day, we came because of, it was Pastor Michael, you know the story, invited us. And we came and I'm at the back. And I'm hearing Pastor Toby speak. And in 2015 or whenever that service was, I whisper under my own breath, this is me. Now, when years go by, you then see things because we're still going somewhere. So it's not fully told. But you see things like Pastor Obi is also called a Pastor Toby Jr. Then you think to yourself, can you have made these things happen? When we joined the family, let me tell you why I can say, for, I can definitely say for me and the brothers, yeah. Yeah, let me just say that. For me and the brothers, we did not come out of the excitement of anything. We were honestly amazed to hear word. Honestly. We were completely amazed. We were hearing the word and it was in that word I heard a call. Maturity of that moment will not make me understand that as me hearing a call. When I heard, when I said under my, because eternity is written in your heart, right? Yeah. When I said, this is me, I didn't know it was a call. So I remember at the end of service, I turned to the brothers and I said to them, oh, welcome to my new church. But even I honestly was bantering. I was bantering. If I say that I was serious, I'm a liar. I was bantering because it was not possible according to what our minds could understand. We were, I always say, you know, when you look at the generals, yeah, I know it wasn't the same setup, but how important they are to the nation was like how we were in our old church. So it's like, I can't even use it as an example, but imagine the maddest person leaving here. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So I'm thinking, but it was a core. Time has, time has gone past and I realized it's a core. So it takes faith for me to respond to that core. Situations started to happen. I'm in my heart, I'm thinking, I can't see. You know, when we came Lancaster House, do you know we could not see that there was going to be an Avermouth? Literally, for us, it just looked like he was leaving one church building to go to another church building. The only thing that was, um, that entertained us or um, um, that we were shocked by was word without fanatics. It wasn't like our after PT was going to start shaking and all of these things. It was purely word. And the fact that there were many young people gathered because of the word. That's what attracted us. Then, like I said, situations happened. We've gone through um, certain things. And fast forward to Ashburnham. Whoever was there with me knows that I still had a big Bible. I had a huge one. And it was one of the break um, times because remember... Um, I can be seeing comments as well, by the way, because I think the only, when I'm talking, this is almost like a conversation between me and one other person, really. 
um, when we talk about Ash Burnham. So I'm there and it's break time. And I remember the brothers has gone out and I'm sitting there because my heart is weighty, weighed down because I witnessed in my heart that I meant to make the move, but I was fearful to make the move. In fact, people that knows the story because, you know, there's some things I don't like saying now, but because I had a certain gift that I used to operate with, yeah, I used to rely on that a lot. But I remember holding the Bible, saying to myself, God, I am offended. So I can't rely on that. So show me from your word. And I remember in that break time, I don't even, you know, it was so amazing as why was that situation? Thank you, Pastor Rike. Had, you mean have. I have. I still operate with that gift. Sorry, sir. But I can't even remember the scripture. I know it was in Psalms somewhere. But I can't remember the scripture. But when I opened the Bible and I looked at the first scripture and I read it, it basically, it was so blatant. It felt like it was saying, Onyeka Obi, leave so, so, and so. It, it felt that blatant. I was so shocked. What I'm trying to say to you, look at this, please, because you're going to go back to the scripture. It took faith to, for me to respond to that call. It took faith. So, I've responded and I'm responding to something I cannot see. Please, I want you to remember, I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. I couldn't see nine family houses or ten or however many. I couldn't see COD. I couldn't see Europe. At that point, and I still have my, my notes from Ash Burnham, I still have it. The main instruction God was giving me was being an available servant. That was my main instruction from um, um, Ash Burnham and then some other things. So I couldn't see anything, but faith enabled me to respond to the call. I've shown you God's or Christ's perspective on his appointment. Now I want to make us look at the, the perspective of the disciples. Read verse 6 for me again. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, yeah? Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. So I can call. Uh, let me use myself for example. I can call a Sicily. I feel like I'm just going to be calling your name now, you know. I can call a Sicily, yeah? But if Sicily will come, <laughs> it will be based on her faith. Yeah? Like Christ called Peter and Cole. But it will take faith for them to believe that they can go up to his level. It will take faith. It says, because anyone who comes to him must believe what? That he exists. And that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Okay, maybe go to the New King James because I don't like believe that he exists. You know, um, I was reading this earlier and I'm trying to really, you know, sometimes you get to a frequency of the word that you know that this word is not, it doesn't really describe, it doesn't articulate well what the spirit is saying. It says, but without faith, this is close, go on. It is impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he Do you is see that? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God. You know, PT said something mad to us, yeah, the other day. And I won't try to explain it. I'll just say it as, um, as basic as it is, yeah. Um, what day was it? Saturday. PT said, do you know that God, yeah, the name God, yeah. Oh, how would I do this now? Because I'll be playing with words. Okay, Yahweh is God's name, right? Um, just like Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, and all of these names. Um, Jehovah Sidkenu. I remember this on one long one. There's Jehovah, da, 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 da. there's bare names, right? Do you know what PT said? PT said that the name God is Yahweh's alter, alter ego. Okay, it's like, my name is Pastor Obi, but my alter ego is PTJ. I 
was like, interesting. You know, so you could go and think about that. But I was looking at PT and I was like, you see this man, yeah? The way he comes with stuff, yeah? I'm just thinking, like, do you, like, have a switch off button? Or is it just, like, constant? See, that might mean nothing to everybody else. But if you know, if you look at everyone that is great in life, have you noticed, yeah? Most of them evolve into having an alter ego. Do you know how my, my favorite worship song right now is God Did? I was banging it out with, um, um, I was going to make a comment. I was banging it out to service yesterday with Afo and Basola. I was literally sitting down just doing this. And I loved, um, I was going to say I loved Jehovah's part. <laughs> I loved, <laughs> I loved Jay-Z's part. You know Jay-Z's got a name. What's his name again? His actual name. There you go. You see, you get to a place in life, yeah, that you cannot be called by your normal name. Your function and your prosperity becomes your alter ego. Look at all of us. We hardly know him. We, know, we all know who Jay-Z is. But what's his name? Maybe people have found it now. Sean. It's so far. Like, you can't... You look at him and say, really, Sean? Definitely not this Sean. But you know what I loved is, you know, they were saying God did, God did. And he didn't feel, let me calm down. He said, Hove did. I was like, this, this guy, I just, I love it. I love it. He's hearing the word. Don't mind me, guys. This is me digressing now. It's like, he knows the word. He's not ashamed. And God is not thinking, mm, what do you mean? Everyone's saying God did. And you're saying Hove did. Because we were people, we are actually a God race. Yeah, rightly so. People may not believe it. Abraham is Abraham's alter ego. Or the father of many nations. Billions is Josh's alter ego. And everyone can laugh at that. But you see patterns of scripture, you wait till it shows. And I think it's like you, you now have, what, AP? I think you still have POJ though. Yeah. <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> you know, if I'm not careful, now everyone will start thinking of nicknames for themselves. That's not what I'm saying. But the way PT just dropped it was excellent. Back to the scriptures, I can remember what I was going to say. But so, yeah, so it says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is. Again, one of the scriptures I was thinking of this weekend. If I believe PT has called me and I come to him, I must come to him believing that he exists. That's what the NIV says. But that doesn't fully express what I want to say. You must believe that he is. What, I, what I'm trying to say is that everything he's preaching is not story. You must believe it's real. In fact, another translation, I don't know if you'll find it, but another translation says, um, for he who comes to God must believe that he is real. You know, there are people following leadership, but what leadership represents, what leadership is saying, they don't believe it's real yet. They have not considered it substance. What they saw Christ is, what Christ had not yet taken over any territory, but they knew that he was the coming king. They had to believe he is to come to him. David was anointed as king. 400 men that believed he is came. And in the process of doing so, they too became. So when I look at Pastor Toby, He's not even speaking hopefully. For me, he is. Everything he represents is real. And if I'm now going to be enrolled into a process that brings me to what he is, I'm going to have to become blurred. To, my eyesight has to become blurred or even blind to everything else so that I can see him and him alone. 
Are you listening to me? Do you have a scripture? Read it for me, quick. E R V, sir. Go on. Without faith, no one can please God. Yeah. Whoever comes to God must believe that he is real. Whoever comes to God must believe that he is real. Remember that I said God is an alter ego of who he is. So when you see his men, you only really benefit from them because we're going to the, the next part of the scripture. You can only really benefit from them if you believe that they are real. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know it's, I'm struggling to actually articulate myself this morning, but you must believe that all that they stand for is actually real. You cannot welcome in your heart, will this happen? For us, let me tell you how Christ's respond. They will die believing. Do you understand that? Christ did not witness in his own life, meaning in him, him dying and resurrecting. He can only witness resurrection if he dies. So it takes for him to enter a state of dying, still believing. Like PT said to us the other day, dying, still reaching. That's the process. That's the position we have to get into. You can go back to NIV or New King James, either one. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, to please him. For he who comes to God, the New King James, must believe that he is. And that what? He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I will receive payment of what I've come to believe. So that's as far as I'm going to go with call this morning, a little part. But I want to just end with two more scriptures, kind of like diverting a bit. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. Mm. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. Do you see this? Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, yeah. It says, where there is no revelation, another translation says, where there is no vision, people cast off restraint. In other words, if you lose sight of what you're trying to achieve, yeah, you will lose, in quote, if I just want to dumb it down, you will lose the discipline to take you there. So every moment of us falling is actually a moment where we lost sight of where we're trying to go. Where there is no, because you know, usually before when I read this scripture, I see it's one thing. Like it's like, oh, you have a vision and it's like, oh, if you fall from it. No, but every day, let me just help you with this. This morning I wake up, yeah, and I'm thinking to myself, this is actually my thought this morning, yeah. I woke up today and I, that's why there's some morning, sorry, I won't respond to everyone or I won't respond to people. But I woke up this morning just thinking to myself, who am I? Now, you see, when I ask myself that question, because my mind is wild, I can think many things, including what I want to be. Yeah? For me, how I regulate myself is, like I've said to you, I am only what I've heard leaders say I am and I am only what I've seen leader to be my leadership to be I can't say vision brought me here but vision is what I sold myself into I was not clear totally I don't think we came in 2016 and we knew what we'll be doing now yes we heard the talks of nation building but it doesn't mean we understood it at the time. But vision now became a person. Are you listening to me? It became a person. So I'm looking at a pastor Toby and I'm sold out to him. Now, whatever a pastor Obi will be in his life is going to be according to what pastor Toby has said to him or at the very least, 
what Pastor Toby is. That's not just Pastor Obi. I'm saying to all of you here. A Kelvin, who is Kelvin? Everything that a Pastor Obi has said to him, or Pastor Toby has said to him, or the very least what he sees in his leader. That's who he is. So I woke up this morning thinking, who am I? And I've had to recall all the words I've heard. Embrace him more than ever that I am a pastor. You know, for other people, that's just an undefined role. Only that we know that it's something that, is, that functions in church. But for me, the understanding of that is growing. Do you want to read another translation? Go on, read it. Voice, sir. Where, okay. there, where there is no vision from God, the people run wild. So why do we run wild? Why do we behave like animals? Why do we allow moments that, you know, the reason why someone can think, oh, yeah, but why are you so angry someone coming to church late? One, that's not, that's not me. Two, that's not the standard of the family. Then when I say that, it could be whatever. But you see what I'm trying to say to certain individuals? When I make what can be deemed by others a small situation big, is me saying that you've lost sight of who you're becoming. You didn't wake up trying to see vision. You didn't wake up asking yourself, who are you meant to be? You don't understand. For Abraham to call himself Abraham and to tell everyone that surrounds him to call him Abraham, which is father of many nations, is that he was daily reminded of who God saw him as. So he will be regulated in the work or the journey he must journey through to become it. So if someone acts out, they lost sight. It doesn't matter if they acted out straight after the word. Guess what? Straight after the word, they lost sight of who they're becoming. Not who they're becoming, who they are. Do you understand me? Where there is no vision from God, where there's no revelation from God, where's the, where there's no insight to who an alarcon is, if a, a lock-on does not constantly keep in front of his mind, his, his, the, mind the eyes of his mind, who he is. Who he is is not what you see now. If he don't keep that in front of his mind, yeah, he will act wild to who he was meant to be. To four will be excusable. We're young people. To be fearful will be excusable. We've not done this before. We will doubt all of these things because we have not kept in front of. So you see, when you look at our giving, we give like who we are. Do you understand? What I have to say who we are is because you're not, it's not that you're becoming. That's us breaking it down into um, um, earthly words. But you, you are, it's just that Abraham, he called himself Abraham before he was a father of many nations. Do you understand that? You are a billionaire. That's why we have in the house, in the houses, we are billionaires to start with. That's who we are. So for me, it's, I realize the moments that we fall, if I'm looking back at me now, the moments that we fall, the moments that we act out, the moments we are lazy, the moments where we're, we're discouraged, the moments where we're fearful, it's because at that moment we lost sight of who we are. Where there is no vision from God, what happens? The people run wild. Yeah. But those who adhere to God's instruction know genuine happiness. But those who adhere to God's instructions know genuine happiness. Message. Let's read that also. I just want everyone to think about these words, yeah? There will be many things trying to make you come out of what you're seeing in your mind's eye, which came out of the word, and it's trying to make you see your physical position. The way we give, like I said, is the way we believe, or is, is we give out of who we believe we are. Do you understand that? Look at what verse 18 in the message says. 
if people can't see what God is doing, mm. they stumble all over themselves. So why do we stumble all over ourselves? We can't see what God is doing. Thinking about Pastor Ben today, as I have over the few couple de- um, the last couple of days, and you know sometimes you're looking at the situation and you're thinking, ah, is this punishment? Is this training? You know it's so tough. Like honestly, that's what I'm thinking: is it punishment or is it training? Training or punishment? Because you can't tell the difference sometimes. I think training is punishment to the body for the soul. Do you understand that? And I I remember thinking about why was he moved from this place to that place? And that place is somewhere we've been trying to avoid because it's seemingly the worst place. Then I hear partly that where he was, he was growing an influence. Interesting. He's becoming a house there. He's becoming a place of influence grown in influence so much so that the govs just said we don't want him here imagine like this feels like a real movie now we need we need people that write because you see our book and our documentary and our future story it's just going to be amazing when you when you decide to open the chapter called winnie it'll be a story of itself i keep telling let me repeat this to you in case you think um um you you have not been sold by what i'm saying we will be the most powerful family there is the most powerful thing there is in europe i've told you that will happen in our lifetime not when we're old i'm not enjoying anything where i'm like this no i'll force it to happen god's looking for those that will quicken the cause of his righteousness speed up the cause um yes i'm looking at that so guess what happens to the point that on sundays a pastor Ben can be called up to preach. Imagine, he can be called up to share word with people. You, normal people don't do that, right? Created a list of over 40 people that all want to be a part of what they believe in him. Do you understand that? I've met some of them that's come out whose sanity was kept by him. There's someone going through something that he shouldn't be going through. But God wanted to, create a, wanted to create a house for people. Then what happens is, because, you know, for years we've been asking, how do we get, like, how do we get access to the chaplains of wherever um, so that we can be going there to preach? And there's been no opening. And then God says, I'll sow one of yours. And that's when I said, God, he has done this for all of us because there's no one else that can go there. But do you know what happened? What was interesting to me is that where he's moved to now, the chaplain of where he was called the new prison. Oh, I was trying to avoid prison, you know. All this time I was trying to, it's all right. I don't know why we're like this. You know what the guy that we say that we, we worship was a prisoner, Christ. You know his sons then became, his sons Paul, Peter, and all that, became reoffending prisoners. It, re-offending um, criminals they were always in prison God knows the day that Pastor Ben comes out we're doing a recording champagne and everything God knows 100% now where he's gone to the chaplain of the old prison calls the chaplain of the new prison saying there's a pastor coming and now uses him immediately in the new prison, which is considered the worst in the world. Not no, the world, sorry, in Britain. <laughs> sorry, I was trying to add juice to the story. <laughs> it's poor, man. The way he's playing the keys, it's like it sounds deep right now. And immediately, someone that is trying to f- look after himself, God's saying, no, I need you to look after people. So there... He's speaking to people. He's still saying this is real jail, but he's speaking. (laughs) To the point that where we tried to organize something for him to come out from there, he was the one that said, no, no, I've got work to do here. This is an amazing story. I'm not lying, by the way. By the way, seriously, I'm not lying. Why did I, how did I get here? Where were we? Cast off restraint. 
message, sir. Yeah, go on. If I don't even know how we got here. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over. Okay, themselves. yeah. So sometimes, <laughs> thank you. So sometimes you're just thinking we'll be stumbling over ourselves, but you know, sometimes I've realized when God is working, just pause, be quiet, and watch. Because even I'm the one that says that the only way through certain things are through it. It's through it, right? You're watching it, but then eventually, I, I, I said to someone the other day, I was like, look, PT has taught us before, there's no middle. It's only God or Satan that people are influenced by. There is no way that Satan will be pushing past the bend to places to preach. Do you understand? So at that moment, I realized I may not understand the process. I, as a man, can look and say, oh, there's problems and God has to correct this. And I feel that God is still doing that. But I know that God is the one orchestrating this thing. And the only way we will keep to the reward is if we believe that he is. He is real and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It says, but when they attend, this is the um, translation I was looking for. Go on. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. Look at this. So again, I remember when Pastor Ben got, I don't know how this turned into Pastor Ben preaching, but when I, when Pastor Ben got ordained, yeah, he's the first pastor to be ordained on his first service. What a um, achievement. Then he gets ordained in, um, what's the name of that kind of service? Our main giving. No, our main giving. Abib. Gets, um, now I understand why he was crying that day. And why PT was smiling. It's like you don't know what you're getting yourself into. (laughs) But he said a word to him that um, you're one of the greatest pastors. That's one of the words that PT said to him. Now, look at this here. I don't even know why I got there. I think it's because I missed the guy. So somehow he's um, truncated this preacher. But you see, how do you keep moving, yeah, in times where it looks difficult? You're meant to attend to what is being revealed bit by bit. That's how you keep moving. Are you listening to me, family? I know I've said a lot of things now. What keeps us going when it's tough is that when you keep hearing the word of God, there'll be a little thing he reveals. Your ability to keep moving is to attend to that. Pay attention. If you have an attentive spirit, you know, all the time, I've just, there was something PT said the other day, yeah, that I just remembered Bankside when PT was, you know when PT's drunk in the preaching spirit, it's like he's shy and it's like he's drunk in it. And he says, Pastor Obi, when I gave you COD, I gave you wealth. That came to me. I was thinking, ah, like, as in, let me leave that because if not, I'll get into some deep stuff. But I was just thinking to myself, I have to therefore, and PT quoted it on Sunday, I have to then God jealously what has been entrusted to me it says when they attend to what he reveals they are most blessed that's what happens that's why we have to keep speaking the word because if your heart is open there is something that God is revealing to you that will give you the means to be able to move just a bit further Let me wrap this up because if not, I'm going to get carried away with some things. We'll get into it this week. I feel this is one of the weeks I'll speak a lot to you guys. Genesis chapter 22. Let me wrap up with this. Verse 18. Read from verse 16 maybe. Verse 15. 15, go on. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, Because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven. This is the blessing that God is speaking over us. He says, look, you're meant to be Abraham, a father of many nations. 
I've taught you before that what the word does is that it makes you aware of the things that you have that you are not aware of. Yeah? You remember when I taught you that he was in fact a father of many nations because he had birthed children according to ideology. He had 318 soldiers in his house. He was already a father of many nations. But his culture was leading him to have be a father of many nations according to him giving birth to a child. That's why even when he gave birth to his first child, which was um, Ishmael, it still didn't count. Because what he was talking about was not flesh. Now he says, now he knows that Isaac is um, his real child, the one that God reckons with. And tells him to sacrifice him. When he's about to sacrifice him, the Bible says that God or an angel from heaven called, at, called to Abraham twice, a second time. Now look at all the blessings. Please, please from verse 16, read the blessings that he read to them, by to my, Abraham. By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, mm. your only son, blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. I want you to think about the scripture, and maybe we'll expand on this um, in this week, maybe. All of these blessings came out of one thing he did, or out of one thing, obedience. Obedience made, but you see, obedience is fine and good, I hear it, but there are obediences that has attached to it prices. If the look, if you were called to get up in the morning to come across the house from storehouse, yeah, to the fortress, yeah, for the word, that's a level of obedience, yeah. But if you have worked for so long on something, you have spent your life's energy, or you've spent everything that you are in something, and you've been called to give that up. Do you know that the price attached to that obedience is different? Said to one of your brothers the other day, I won't tell you to do something I've not done. You guys know my story about youth revival. It, I still say it, people don't know how much I've put into it. I have to speak on my own accord right now. People don't know how much I've put in it. And that was to give something away that at that time, that's all we could see. It says, because of this level of obedience, I, in blessing, I will bless you. That's deep. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you and your descendants as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore, meaning that they'll be innumerable. And your descendants, what will happen? And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. You will... You see, he's saying that what you will give birth to will interface with powers and they will win. Looking at Pastor Sam, looking at Pastor Oni, looking at Pastor Shadi, I'm talking about like the first, first sons and daughters of the work, yeah? And where they are and where they can speak now came out of a man paying a price of obedience that was a lot. Um, look, how do I say this now? Again, one of my thoughts this morning, I'm wrapping up, but I want to um, start, I want to share one thing with you. I thought to myself this morning, what would I say has been my most valuable seed? <clears throat> of course, my seed is the family seed, what we've given together, but I'm also saying, what's, been my most valuable seed there are times we've gone to give x amount give x amount give x amount but i thought to myself today my most valuable seed was my 10k seed and i've given more than that but i think that seed was more than any other because you see now 
we can go and give. We can, you know, in your houses, you can give to the house of treaty. You can give to the fortress. Um, you can bring to Pastor Obi. You can do whatever you want to do. But let me be honest with you. Part of why some people can do this, and I think everyone has that seed, though. And I'll explain what that seed is. When I gave that 10K, God knows, God knows that I honestly did not believe I would come across this money again. I didn't have a system. And I already knew me that I was not a business savvy person growing up anyway. So it's not like I didn't know where I was going to go in direction of business. By now I'm in the ministry and I'm not allowed to work. And at the time, we didn't have... Do you remember any business we had then? We didn't have anything. Our, um, you know, them times we still had good credit so you can rely on... You know, do you remember getting loans? Actually felt like God had answered your prayers when it got approved. But by that time, credit is done. There's nothing. And I remember saying to Pastor Toby when I handed over the seed that... I was going to take this money to go and invest in business because I didn't know how I ever come across money again at that scale. But I was led to invest this in you. And that's still the biggest, I think, response. PT, I know, has seen way more than that. But you see the price attached to it. The price attached to Pastor Obi, rid, get rid of youth revival. The price is not what other people will pay. So it unlocks a certain level of blessing over your life. It says, blessing, in blessing I will bless you. And multiplying I will multiply your descendants. As the stars of the heaven. And as the sand which is on the seashore. Meaning, both of them you can't count. You can't count them. But you see the, the character of your descendants. The character of the people that will come out of you is that they shall possess the gates of the enemies. Who were the enemies of God at that time? People that sinned? No. Nations that were not under his command. So I want to end with verse 18, which is my main point. Go on. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because you have obeyed my voice. So the obedience to a level of sacrifice, yeah, that disarmed an Abraham, that weakened an Abraham, the ability to obey. I remember that day in Mitchum coming back home and I went upstairs and as I'm weeping, praying and all of these things, the one prayer that I could, I don't know why I was praying it, but the one prayer I was praying was, Lord, help me to obey so that when my people have to obey, they will have the strength to obey. That's the only thing I was praying for. Didn't know what thing they would need to obey. But that's what came to my heart. Maybe I was emotional. But you see, the obedience, yeah, set everything that Abraham will now do to be in a blessing. It says, in your seed. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you obeyed. You know, when you haven't obeyed, do you still know you have seed? Let me explain what I mean by that. You know, um, for example, your business, yeah? The time you give a resilien, yeah? The time you give a a club, the time you give a too clean, too fresh, the time you give whatever businesses, MTZ and all of them, the time, the research you give to it, the finance you put to it. Every time you go as sound minds to go and do something, do you know that those are all seeds you're planting? They are things that you're planting to have a certain harvest. You're waking up in the morning so that you can get on time to the office. Do you know that's a seed? The finances we are contributing to this work, do you know that's a seed? But if not for obedience, do you know that the seed you're sowing 
yeah, rather than it blessing nations, it will curse nations. Obedience brings everything you do to being a blessing. So Adam, as far as he was obeying God, anything he does was approved. If he called the lion a lion, that's what it was. The garden was thriving for hundreds of years up until the moment of disobedience. And guess what happened when he disobeyed? The seed that he produced, Cain, then became the father of murder. He was the first murderer. It was a curse to a generation. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Why am I bringing all of these up, these things up? I want every business, and you know, hopefully this week, if not this week, I hope it's this week, we're going to start having workshops. In these workshops, we're going to be speaking about the new structure of the family without removing the foundation. In these workshops, we'll also make it clear who, what we're proposing and where we're proposing people to be. But there will also be opportunity for people to say, okay, I want to be involved in this. I want to be involved in this. I'm trying to tell you that, you see, who Pastor Obi is, <clears throat> who Pastor Obi will be in five years is determined by the seeds I start planting today. The way I sow myself to word is going to create a Pastor Obi of five years time. Do you understand that? It's all in your hands. The finances that God will give me or the finances that I will have authority over is going to be based on the seeds I'm planting now. How I want to end this is to ask you the question, how do you value your seed? There are people you have to ask yourself now, there are things you're doing that may not really be valuable. I think if someone is in, has a skill, if they've not, add, how do you add value to skill? The discipline, the, the different things you have to be involved in. I've seen someone that, someone can just be, sorry, I, I keep using music as an example because it's one of the easiest examples. I'm actually not adding anybody. But someone of skill can just rely their life on just singing. But you see, you can make that more valuable by thinking about how much more you contribute to even that, the discipline you put behind it, the thought you put behind it, the sacrifice you put behind it. So in the case of someone like a barrel, I can give her the free license to go and be trying until we've created a platform that will help push her more. But why can I push her? Why can I say she can go out and do these things? Because in the beginning of the year, I said to her, just don't mess up with Livingstone Nation. I don't care if it becomes only you. That's the instruction that came to my heart. Serving that capacity, if you obey, everything you do will be set to blessing. If the seeds we're producing are not blessing a generation, are not blessing people, and it can, you know, the problem is people say, how do we measure that now? You can only measure that by your sincerity at this point. How much I give myself. So I'm not a 29 year old. Yeah. That's in a position saying that I now have people that I personally don't care about giving. No, the reason why I will set targets to people is because I am obsessed with it. The reason why I'm passionate about soul winning is because I believe that that's one of the seeds that God gave us as sowers that you are meant to be going out and reaching people we look at the if you're in a department an admin administration department you're looking at how do i value my input you're considering how much you're putting in because if i put in lazy work i'm just using that as an example then i shouldn't be surprised with the kind of harvest i get so in to make sure that nothing I put down is below standard, I must think about everything I put in, my waking up, my going to bed, my finances, 
my time. The, if I look at the 3Gs and I say, and not just the 3Gs, I'm looking at look to your mental development. Start to develop yourself. When you're putting in those things, I know before you can say, I don't like school and all of these things. But if we're saying it now, we're saying that in your seat, your contribution right now is going to bless nations. How do I make sure that what I'm putting in constantly is a blessing? I must think that everything I do will affect a nation either positively or negatively. So if I wanted to, um, to affect it positively, with that mindset, I set a standard to my giving. I said to the brothers the other day, to the guys the other day, look, for me, if a target is given, the kind of thing I want to be is, I don't want it to be more than a three-day turnaround. It's a standard I've set. Because imagine if a na something, nation, you know, nations, is, um, there's a great demand on it. Why would a whole nation's um, maybe life hang on how long it's taken for me to provide something? Do you understand that? I'm saying that no one has set that standard for me. It's because I know, as it was said with Abraham, that because you obeyed my voice, I have set all your seed, your seed, whatever you produce, I've set it to be a blessing. So that verse 18 tells me that if not for the obedience to a voice, if not the obedience to a pastor Toby, if not obedience to a pastor Obi, whatever seed I'm putting down, my time is only going to be a curse. I hope you understand what I'm saying, guys. What I'm saying is that we now need to put value, put a price on everything we're doing. So if I say to a pastor priest, I'm coming on to do a stream, I'm now looking from timing to quality to the attention to every little thing. I'm looking at how much you're putting into it. Knowing that, you see, seeds are usually despised because they're small relatively to, where, to what you're looking for. But they are the sure way of getting to what you're looking for. Can't produce a tree by another means. It has to still be through that seed. So the care and the guidance I give to that is important. For us now, I keep saying it, it's still a moment of maturity for us. And I'm, not, I'm, I'm in no regrets because I believe that every road that we've traveled are roads we had to travel. I, I believe that. Before I used to think so, but I think otherwise, but by word, hearing certain things, I think we were just meant to go through where we're going through. Everyone in this family will be very strong. Those of us that decide to survive will be very strong from your posture to your presentation to the way you speak to your faith and confidence to your to your ability to give is why you have the ability to have all of these things will happen and that's why where we're entering is now into a moment where we start to come together even more we come together even more and we say look it's not about the individuals about the house are you hearing me i thought to open up our monday with sharing thoughts that's why it's been here and there but I think it's enough for you to go back and think. For me, I just look into myself, saying to myself, I want to be able to put value on everything I do, knowing that it's a blessing to nations. I love you all. Enjoy your day. Bye, guys.